Thanks so very much for staying with us. We are racing towards the finish line on this uh, Tuesday, the 13th day in the month of September 20, uh, 22 our time, just about 26 and a half minutes before 9 o'clock. We conclude on top the hour of 9. Joining me now to continue our discussion, we've been focused all morning on um, trauma and how you can prepare students um, to deal with traumatic situations as the academic year moves into full swing. Uh, Mr. Pius Stephen is the District 6 Councillor um, and he joins me now to continue our discourse. Mr. Stephen, thanks for being patient and thanks for agreeing to come on. Yes, good morning everybody. Good morning to you, sir. Uh, uh, it is indeed a pleasure to be on here this morning. Uh, although I'm hearing a little low, so I'll have to try my utmost to see if I can hear what, what's happening. We continue on our Mr. Stephen to um, try to improve the audio um, for you. So um, just continue to bear with us. I've seen to lost the video link with Mr. Pius Stephen. He should be back on uh, momentarily. Stay with us before we conclude the broadcast. We will share with you the word for the day and um, the financial tip as well. Um, tomorrow you want to join us very, very early. We'll continue our focus on um, the a situation developing over in uh, um, Canada where two farm workers from St. Lucia remain in Canada um, attempting to complete the contract. However, um, they are not um, doing too well. We'll touch base with them live um, tomorrow from Nova Scotia, Canada. Wake up early tomorrow. I'll also have in studio the head of the Citizenship by Investment the program. He will um, join me to discuss some um, interesting um, developments and i also have some special guests from the department of sustainable development so it's a packed show um tomorrow wake up early and um, join us your morning cup of tea right here on good morning saint lucia as we try to reconnect with mr pius stephen um counselor in uh, district six let's now bring on the word for today as we promote greater literacy amongst our viewers and citizens here on the island of uh, St. Lucia. The word for today, September 13th, now comes on the screen. Tatulogy. Tatology, my humblest apologies. Tatology on um, this uh, Tuesday it's a noun tautology is an expression of phrase that says the same thing twice just in a different way for this reason tautology is usually undesirable as it can make you sound worthier than you need to be and make you appear somewhat foolish occasionally tautology can help to add emphasis or clarity or introduce international ambiguity but in most cases intentional sorry intentional ambiguity but in most cases it's best to choose just one way to state your meaning or eliminate the extra uh, the extra word i know let's use it now in a sentence i know it's true because i heard it with my own ears is an example of the use of tautology once again i know it's true uh, because i heard it with my own ears the word for today tautology it's a noun an expression or phrase that says the same thing twice um, just in a different way did you know your word for today here on the program um, good morning senior show vibes at sunrise 22 minutes uh, moving on to nine o'clock my technicians are continuing our efforts to um, contact mr pius stephen the counselor in uh, district six now let's bring you the financial tip of today um, the segment is called You and Your Money, where we provide you with free but yet um, valuable advice to manage money um, and to make more money. The financial tip of today is up next. And now for your financial tip. When you get a raise, raise your retirement savings too. You know how you've always told yourself you would save more when you have more? We're calling you out on that. Every time you get a bump in pay, the first thing you should do is up your automatic transfer to savings and increase your retirement contributions. It's just one step in our checklist for starting to save for retirement.
so much your financial tip for today right here on the program join us weekdays 6 to 9 a.m right here during the broadcast of good morning st lucia for your financial tip mr um past steven is is back with us um thanks for reconnecting sir we were talking about um the role of counselors how we can prepare students to respond and uh, return to a sense of normalcy um following the interaction with um traumatic incidents um you based in district six mr stephen um based on your work what are some of the, the 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 case studies and the examples that come to 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 your desk all right before i do that let me say good morning again to everybody listening both uh over radio and possibly viewing us on television um this morning what has just transpired was a typical example of what happens with technology and some of the challenges we had uh, we're doing the um what you are learning and all of those things and every now and then your technology fails and drops on you so that is a really classic example of some yeah. of the things that, that, that we go through on a daily basis by example every day but you were asking about the, the the types of cases and types of things we see happening i mean in terms of trauma um trauma i think mrs eugene must have told you has given you a definition of trauma this morning mm -hmm. but we see a number of cases happening we see a lot of things um, where I think Mrs. Yumi has spoken to that persons because of the what happened in the period of COVID-19, um, a lot of persons were displaced. If we use that term, they moved from um, they had to move because of of, of parents losing jobs. Um, we had cases where they moved from one district to the next that created um, anxiety for them. We had loss of life um, through um, illness. We also had accidents, and of course, we had the unfortunate violence we see happening around us. So these are some of the things that we see happening and coming across mm -hmm. our desk mm -hmm. as counselors. In the South. Well, I guess nat nationally also. Yeah. How severe is the impact of trauma on, on our student population? It is something that we don't quite understand. And let me try to put that into perspective for okay. you. Um, a lot of times we see things happening in adult relationships. And from my experience, a lot of what we see happen, especially in intimate relationships and the breakups and the challenges we see happen, a lot of it points back to childhood trauma. Mm. And there is something we, we refer to as behavior trauma, that, uh, not behavior, rather betrayal trauma, <clears throat> where adults are supposed to be um, protecting pretty much children and they don't do that. And so that seemed to be a big issue. Now we throw what has been happening within the last two years, couple of years, um, on top of that with all the crime we see and um, the COVID-19, the impact of COVID-19. And we see that having a significant impact on the children. What we see happening in the great Ks as they come in is that the ability to settle, uh, they have challenges in their ability to settle at school. What has happened is no, normally they would be at the, the preschool during that time. Mm -hmm. And so the preschool would help with that um, in a great way. Also the interaction with each other. So they're having challenges interacting with each other, having challenges mm -hmm. settling with each other. Mm -hmm. We see um, around the grade fives and the grade sixes where they, well, pretty much a grade fives, um, where children seem to be protesting. There seems to be some level of protest. And we understand that because of what has happened, the um, school is a place where children socialize, but we've kept them away from school. And so now we see that when they return to school, the way they would have, the, what we expect of them in the traditional sense where they would have be, where they'd be able to interact um, very well with their peers, we don't see that happening. So we see a lot of anger being... Um, Students displaying a lot of um, anger issues, especially around that time, around that age, around the grade fives and um, towards grade six. Yeah, um, isolation as well. You see, you see, in the isolation is a big thing. And so, if you understand what that has done to, to especially the male population, I think they took they took a serious blow with regards to that, because um, the if you look at the genetic makeup of a male and a female, a female because of the presence of um, estrogen, a female can do well. By sitting in one place, an estrogen will allow for the secretion of feeble hormones like serotonin. Mm -hmm. But for the male, uh, predominant, um, the predominant um, thing we have with us is the, with the, is the testosterone. testosterone yes. And so if testosterone, um, it tends to, from what research is suggesting, inhibit the, um, the secretion of, of those feeble hormones. Now for that to happen, males have to move around. That is why you realize in classrooms, that males appear to be getting in trouble more because they're moving around. But they need to do that to, to feel good. Now, when you have restricted a, a young boy, a boy, when he comes out, he's coming out with this 
type of frustration and we see a lot of the frustration coming out for the young children now they don't know exactly how to express that and that is where counseling comes in to help them um, express the frustrations in healthy ways to help them manage that but also to help the educators and parents understand what the children are faced with and, and what they're dealing with thanks thanks for sharing those examples with us of um, the clear reality of what we've seen the response we've seen from students at various levels um the exposure so to traumatic um incidents how does it affect the learning environment not just for those who directly impacted but for other members of the student population and for for teachers as well all right so you, you spoke to um learning for example um trauma affects students ability to concentrate first of all because you they would be replaying the stories back in their heads um they have problems with, with memory and recall and even processing information and uh on the other end of the well on the final of the, the spectrum that same spectrum they're they having problems um with problem solving dealing with the issues that they have now because of what has happened to a child a child who experienced trauma in a class setting would be displaying characteristics that are what we that the other students may not understand as being normal because of the traumatic experience a child has been through and so the teacher is there teaching the class and the child is just staring to blank space the teacher is not the child is not even understanding what mm -hmm. the teacher is saying and so that may create some level of frustration for the teacher, the teacher also right. the students to so the way the child is reacting a student may be very um hyper vigilant and so you touch the child the child is very will start will be startled very quickly um a, ch a child may not be as um what we uh, would be we tend to get upset a lot quicker uh, may also be angry may also have um, be very destructive and uh, we see all those things coming through and so with a child like this in the classroom setting um, it can offset or it can create a, a serious disruption in the classroom especially if the teacher is not aware and the, uh, the students don't know what's really happening yeah are, are teachers and and the education um sector adequately trained and resourced to to respond at efficiently but what we are doing as as, as counselors is we are developing trauma-informed educators and that is one of the push that we have trauma to develop trauma-informed educators. educators nice and so working with teachers it means working with teachers to help them understand the impact trauma of trauma on learning and the behavior as well because they go hand in hand so um that teachers will be in a position where they can provide a level of support they can understand what that student is going through they can understand why the student is behaving the way they're behaving and so they too will understand their own reaction towards the behaviors for example if the child is um if a child for example is is, is um well children may, be too, may, may do two things in the face with trauma they may be very aggressive or they may be very passive and so the child becomes withdrawn would the teacher now feel that you know i'm so frustrated that i'll give up but if the teacher understands what the child is really dealing with or the teacher sees the aggressive behavior the teacher is in a position now to understand and because you understand what's happening you're in a position to react in a much um more appropriate way to to what the child is dealing with mm -hmm. and provide a level of support to that child or that it. student um walk us through mr steven a, a typical counseling session with, with a student affected by, by by a traumatic incident all right so the first thing we will probably do is to to um most times the cases are referred from the school and so what we have at the school um uh, we have like i said we're moving towards um having to develop inform trauma informed teach educators or teachers mm -hmm. and so what we have at each school now we have what we call a point teacher because uh, mrs eugene has spoken to that this morning we have a significant problem with the number the ratio of counselors yes. to to um students yes and so what we have are point teachers at the school who would now be the first point of contact with those cases and now they they, they would inform us or the principal of um, those cases that have happened and so what we do we make an assessment mm -hmm. on the impact the severity of of of, of what has happened and how significantly it may have impacted the child and so we take that group together and uh, we conduct what we call what a lot of people call a debriefing session although mrs eugene now say that is restabilization sessions that we're doing yeah and the, the purpose of that is to help students process their experiences to help and a lot of times students have a lot of experiences but because they are students because they're children we don't allow for them to do that especially in our um, society 
a lot of times adults are the ones who speak and children are not really given the opportunity to speak so they are given the opportunity to express their, mm. themselves to talk about their emotions and so sometimes they may if they don't feel like talking they may draw or they may write about these things but they may create songs or poems and so on um, also the debriefing session helps the students make sense of what has happened that is very important so in recovery one of the things that would happen is if the person understands or is able to make sense of what has happened the um, ability to recover is much quicker um, and so also it is important to help the child understand the um, how the experiences may have impacted them and to help them identify or come up with healthy strategies to manage the impact of that trauma mm -hmm. and so also to help them identify support structures because support structures is very important the better or the more stable the support structures of an individual is the greater the chances or the quicker that person can um, greater that person can can recover yeah. from or manage that trauma yeah. now in the in the session the first thing you will do you have the, the various phases in a debriefing session where you have the fact phase and so you just allow the student to talk about the facts you're not writing anything you're not recording anything you're just allowing the person to express themselves and you listen persons within the that same setting are informed that you should not be commenting on what the person has said it's not about trying to get the truth or or anything it's about the person's story and so the two of us will be looking at the same incident but we perceiving it differently so they are allowed to to tell their story then we we, we um, examine the thoughts some of the things that happened and so you know when this thing happened what was the first thing that came to your mind a lot of times people push out on the back burner and they're not processing that yet mm -hmm. and so it's important to process that then we look at their actions what did you do in the moment um, who did you turn to and so a lot of times it gives us an indication of how the person was able to deal with that and so if the person if it debilitated the person that child or if the child was able to seek support from an uh, you know a family member an adult or something um, then we express the we we explore the feelings of that person or the, or the child how were you feeling in the moment a lot of times they have not even thought about that their feelings mm -hmm. and so we also go on to um, the impact it has on on you as, as, as an individual the various things that you can expect the various things that um, persons within similar experiences will, will expect and so that is also important to allow them to talk about that because persons dealing with a situation all perceive it differently and they all have different feelings and so for example let me take uh, an example a hurricane maybe uh, about to approach and um, for an adult it might be a traumatic thought he's very traumatic but for a child the child may actually be happy that yeah. the hurricane is coming over and so um, when you do sessions and you discuss those things persons don't feel guilty about how they felt but they just understand that's part of the process and we all have different um, ways of perceiving and dealing with, with, with matters like this mm -hmm. it also provides some level of support because you might be feeling bad or you might be feeling sad you might be feeling depressed but if you have somebody else having sharing similar feelings yeah. then it provides you some form yeah. of hope and some form of support yeah. that you're not the only one feeling that way yeah. uh, uh, on the point of the support system mr stephen what first comes to mind is the family um and, and secondly the, the community what are the roles of those two units there well the family is very very important i have said that um one of the problems we have, and if you allow me to, to, to um, go down the road a little bit, sure. with the tangent, one of the problems we have in our society with crime is the breakdown of the family. Um, and we've seen stable families. Normally what we see in stable families is that the incidence of crime seem to be a, a, a lot less. Now, I don't really have the statistics on that, but we, it's just based on observation. Um, and so if you look at it, uh, if the family structure, the, the better the family structure, the better the student. And I can give an example. I can give two examples here where... Um, without using names and one of the issues we have as counselors is sometimes when we speak people say that um, counselors are not confidential children but because of the small society we are in um, you may try to explain the situation and you may give information that persons can connect the dots and come up mm -hmm. with but let me just give you two, two scenarios we had a scenario where a case some years ago where two students were allegedly I say allegedly I don't know if that was a fact sexually violated and the uh, the one student who had the family support, the parents were there, brothers were there, father was there, especially the fathers. Very, very important um, to note, Shannon. Fathers are very, very important in this whole thing. The fathers were there. Uh, the father, rather, was there. Big brother was there. That student, within two months, was able to sit and write CXE. 
-hmm. and succeeded mm -hmm. very well, recovered so well, and the person that's doing it very well in CXC. We had the other case at the end of the spectrum where we had a student, similar situation, but the parents' attitude was, well, you know, you did whatever happened to you, you know, mm -hmm. we told you about it, and so, you know, we warned you, and so it's your business type deal. And that student, in spite of our best efforts, dropped out of school. Mm -hmm. So you see, you see the, the, the dynamics, the, the importance mm -hmm. of family support. Very good now, I was saying fathers, fathers are very important for, to provide safety and to help um, regulate anxieties mm -hmm. of people, especially the boys. That is very, very important. And so if we see fathers playing a more active role in the lives of, of their, their, their children, then we see the children tend to do a lot, a lot better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Mr. Stephen. Um, so much more we can um, discuss, but we're quickly running out of time. Finally, from me, um, what does the research point to in terms of the future performance and integration of students affected by um, trauma into society? What does the research show? All right, well, what the, not, once children, in fact, trauma is always ever present. And so uh, once this is um, addressed, as long as we address trauma, there is a school of thought that trauma that you that you can just manage trauma and never goes away. Mm. Um, they use it as you know having an injury and, and a scar coming out of it. But once it is managed, um, persons understand that you know when adversity strikes that you are able to to deal with it. And once you have the support systems, then that person usually will do fairly well. And I remember the case of Sufre Comprehensive where I worked at Sufre Comprehensive after Thomas. Thomas. We yes. had a very aggressive program there. We know we had lost a number of lives mm -hmm. and. Um, because of the, the program that we had, it was very aggressive. We worked with about 250 students. Uh, it was very difficult for counselors out there, myself in, included. Uh, what we saw uh, the, the, uh, was that for that year, for CXC that year, Super Comprehensive was the only school where we had an increase in performance. So if that tells you something... An increase in um, performance. As long as you... Yes. yes. You can look at the stats. That year after Thomas for CXC, Super Comprehensive was the only school with an increase in performance. Mm -hmm. But these were the students who were the most significantly impacted by Hurricane Thomas. Yeah, but perhaps they, they, they benefited from the support of, of the counseling system. Significantly. Mm -hmm. Significantly. And we identified the, the, the um, support structures within the family for them too. Okay. And a lot of them, what they realized was, irrespective of what you have around you, as long as family is there, and that was one of the things that was, themes that was coming out, as long as family is there, the family is still there, then your chances of recovery is always great. Yeah. That family support. It's not much for me to add after that um, final statement from you. The family support, family support, family support is so critical in the upbringing of a child and in the holistic development of a child, especially post-exposure to a traumatic um, incident. Mr. Pai, Stephen Arnold, thank you for your time. Extremely valuable insight, and I'm hopeful that the information that you imparted this morning is of value to a parent or a family who tuned in. Thank you so much. All right, thanks for having me. Have a wonderful day. You're most welcome. Pastor Stephen, District 6, I'm um, counselor, ending our discussion on Beyond the Headlines. And that's all the time that we have on today's program. Thank you so much for joining us. God's Prayer will be back at 6 a.m. tomorrow with another exciting, enlightening, and educational program. My special guests will include the head of the Citizenship by Investment Program. I do hope that you join us then. On behalf of my executive and technical uh, producers, management, and the entire team, my name is Shannon Bonhurst. To a terrific Tuesday.